This is the Gemini Automatic Star Focuser Pro and it's an electronic focuser for your telescope for astrophotography. It's a direct competitor to the ZWEF, the super well-known ZWEF. The ZWEF costs, uh, what, 200 US dollars roughly and if you want a temperature sensor for it, you have to shell out an additional 12 US dollars. This little thing here costs 70 US dollars, less than half the price of the ZWEF and it's supposed to be able to do exactly the same thing. It also comes from that price with a temperature sensor, which actually works. And if you shell out the incredible additional amount of five US dollars, you get a very cheap looking and terrible looking remote control, which I actually ordered by mistake. I wanted to get the version without remote control because I do not need the remote control and that's gonna end up being e-waste and I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, this super cheap focuser, is it any good or is it simply garbage. So first things first, it came in this beautiful little uh, nondescript box, Gemini Electronic Automatic Focuser, which you'll notice is not the same text that is printed on the focuser itself, which is Automatic Star Focuser Pro. Uh, so they haven't been able to, I, get, I guess, decide on a naming scheme, but okay, okay, whatever, this is fine. It says, and it does, support ASCOM and ND, and I tested it with uh, my StellarMate Pro for ND and indeed it worked immediately, no issue whatsoever. And then I wanted to test it with ASCOM. Or actually, the first thing that I did before even opening the box is I saw there were those QR codes to download the ASCOM driver and a Facebook group, which is a private Facebook group. You need to be, uh, you need to apply for it and be accepted to it. I'm currently in the process, so hopefully I'll have access to it. Uh, so I excitedly scanned this QR code. It linked me to a OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive online uh, drive. Okay, that's not the greatest sign ever, but whatever, which immediately spitted out an issue, an error. I wasn't able to download the driver. Fortunately, uh, another website called What's or uh, whatastro.com had uh, uploaded the, a copy of the driver and I was able to download it from there and install it on my computer. But honestly, this is not a great experience. Uh, those guys, whoever they are, they should create their own website where we can download the driver with no issues like that. So that's for the ASCOM driver. If you're using Indy like StellarMate, you won't have this issue, but that was a bit of a rough start. Otherwise, inside the box, we found the temperature sensor. Okay, fine. We also get a USB cable uh, with like uh, an angled adapter at the end, which is actually really nice to see because that makes it much easier to use. We get a bracket that seems to be a complete clone of the ZWEF bracket. So that's probably a good thing. And then we get three coupling adapters uh, rather than the four that the W provides for different diameters of your uh, focuser shaft on the telescope that you'll be using to set up that focuser. I also had my e-waste, which I haven't tested. This is an infrared adapter for the focuser with the infrared remote control. I haven't tested that. And we also had uh, an empty plastic bag. I'm not even joking, an empty plastic bag with next to it, not inside it, but next to it, basically floating in the box were uh, four screws, four screws and four washers there. Uh, so I guess they meant to put it in the bag. Uh, Someone got annoyed and tired uh, of putting stuff in the bag. So I guess they just threw it into the box and called it a day. But okay, I mean, for the price, I guess I can't complain. Uh, it's uh, kind of like expected, part of the experience, I would say. Now, of course, the star of the show is the focuser itself. Now, the focuser, I was surprised by how large it seemed. And indeed, I placed it side by side with the ZWEF. It has the same height and the same depth as the ZWEF, but it is much fatter on one side compared to the EF. Okay, that's fine. But at the same time, it manages to feel extremely light and to be honest, a bit cheap, but I don't care as long as it works. So I did measure its weight. Uh, it weighed, it weighed uh, 191 grams uh, compared to the ZWAF 277 grams. So it's a really light, cheap feeling piece of equipment. But again, as long as it works, why not? Uh, also, a very interesting thing is that the actual shaft on the focuser 
has flat surfaces on two opposite sides instead of having a single flat surface and then the rest is just a, a circle. Uh, there are two flat surfaces at 180 degrees from one another, which made me think, oh cool, they probably have set up their couplers so that on one side, the side that we that will attach to the focuser will have two worm screws that are 180 degrees from uh, one another. And the uh, thing is, no, absolutely not. Uh, they're uh, 120 degrees offset from one another. I'm not exactly, uh, exactly sure what the reasoning here is, uh, but I guess it is what it is. Again, if it works, I don't care. <laughs> but you can see, uh, this is a bit jank. I mean, the driver download is super jank because it was not there. Uh, the uh, focuser is super light and feels very jank. The uh, coupler with the shaft feels also a bit jank. And of course, the presentation of the screws to attach the focuser to a telescope, also a bit jank. But again, it's 70 US dollars. What do you expect? By the way, I'll of course have the links down in the description if you're interested in buying this ultra cheap focuser. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to uh, put it on my carbon star telescope here. Uh, basically, we'll just be uh, putting it like this and have it coupled on the telescope. I'll show you how it looks like once I've put it on, but it should be exactly the same thing as with a norm normal ZWEF. Oh, and of course, if you have the ASI Air, this won't work with it. Okay, so let me do the installation and get back to you once it's done. And the installation is done. Before we have a closer look, I want to specify that I bought the uh, focuser by myself from AliExpress directly. Even though I did not need it at all, I just wanted to see because I had heard so much from it from my Patreon supporters, from some child members, from my viewers, uh, that, and from other astrophotography channels that I wanted to like have a look at how it looks like by myself. So this is not sponsored. No one contacted me to review this. I'm just doing it on my own. And by the way, I'm able to do this kind of activity thanks to you guys. So if you want to support the channel, you may want to leave a like on the video. If you're new to the channel and you like astrophotography in general, then you may want to consider subscribing with that beautiful subscribe button. If you want to help me even more and you're planning on buying anything from Amazon or Agena or High Point Scientific, First Light Optics, astroshop.eu, etc., if you do so after clicking the links that I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. If you want to help me more directly, uh, you can join my Patreon using the link that I have in the description, or you can join the channel as a member using the join button next to the subscribe button. And you know it guys, it is thanks to your generosity that this channel still exists and I'm able to keep going like that and buy this kind of stuff to review. I also want to say that I did a quick test visually of the focuser backlash, you know, where I can look at the focuser shaft and uh, use, like basically move it in one direction, then in the other direction and see how long it takes for the focuser to catch up when it moves in the other direction. Because once you've attached it to a telescope and you look at the backlash, you're not looking at the backlash of the electronic focuser, you're looking at the backlash of the total system, including the automatic focuser. And so based on my visual examination, just for your reference, I saw that roughly the backlash is between 10 to 15 steps on the focuser. Other users have reported seeing values like 40, so maybe 10 to 15 steps is actually really good, but then maybe the 40 value was included the whole system value. So I'll see once I test under the uh, stars, which should be later in this video, fingers crossed. Now going back to the installation proper, it was exactly like installing a ZWEAF. A couple of screws on the bottom, couple of, of screws on the focuser, you put the uh, coupler on and you are done. Very simple, it was literally a five minutes job. So extremely easy to do. Uh, by the way, uh, unlike if you buy, I, I believe that if you buy from uh, ZW, you'll get those nice uh, hex wrenches. Here it is bring your own tools type of deal, which is perfectly fine with me since I already have all of the tools that I need. The screws provided do seem to use a three millimeters uh, hex wrench just for your information. Before we go and test it under the stars, I want to uh, mention that I have tested the temperature sensor and it seemed to be accurate, at least 
roughly accurate, so I, I compared it to a room temperature sensor and it, it was within a couple of degrees Celsius. And if I like grabbed it in my hand, it would rise in temperature to 30 something uh, degrees, 35 degrees roughly. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. So it seems to be working. Uh, someone else had mentioned that it didn't work for them. So just so you know, there could be some jank there. But it's, uh, to me, it's not a big deal because I, I would refocus fairly frequency, frequently anyway. And by the way, just like the EF, it does not require power. So it's USB only. And by the way, here is how the ASCOM driver looks like. Uh, you can apparently choose the speed of the uh, motor. I haven't really tried multiple speeds yet. I'm just going to keep it on the default for now. You can set backlash, which you should never do. Uh, in Nina, you just need to use overshoot backlash and then you're good. And there's also apparently an option to heat up the focuser if you're using it in very cold temperatures. I guess it uses its internal electronics to basically use more power and heat itself up. But I haven't tested that yet. It is summer here, so I'm not going to uh, do it for now. So anyway, now my next step is to use it under the stars. So I'll see you once the skies have cleared and I can show you how well it works. And I have no doubts that it will work well because I see it moving very reliably just uh, by my initial tests. But anyway, see you then. And we have some results. I did get a little bit of uh, clear skies. And so I was able to test out the focuser together with my uh, Carbon Star Newtonian telescope. So I was very impatient to test the focuser. So the, in the early evening, before even the, the sky was completely dark, I tested it out and I intentionally set the Nina backlash correction features to zero, to off basically, no backlash correction whatsoever. And this is what I saw. So basically the uh, focus curve is working decently, but you can see on the right hand side here, uh, we have what is apparently some backlash there of around 30 focuser steps. So instead of the 10 to 15 that I had uh, seen when I looked at the uh, motor shaft directly. And as you can see, my autofocus step size seemed to be perfectly good with uh, 15 focuser steps. Uh, so in between the focus measurement points, we have 15 focuser steps from the Gemini focuser. And the end result, looking at the final image, it was simply not in focus. It's actually fairly easy to check with a Newtonian because you'll see duplicate kind of Newton Newtonian spikes on the stars. I ran it a second time. This is what I got. So this seems to agree more or less with that 30 steps roughly of backlash. So if you're using something like Nina, it's very easy to go to the options autofocus. And then I highly recommend using the overshoot backlash compensation. And then in the backlash in or out in either of those values, you put any value that is higher than the backlash that, uh, I, that you measured with the focuser. So for us, we looked at roughly 30 steps of backlash, but I can choose any value that is higher than that. And I am in this case choosing 100, which is, you know, higher than it needs to be, but there's no real drawback to that. I actually initially used 60 and 60, this is what the, the kind of results that I got. So perfect curve and in the end, perfect focus, no issue whatsoever. So a value of 60 would have worked as well. But if you look at my recent focus curves with uh, 100, they're all perfectly fine. They're very repeatable and we get perfect focus at the end that I double checked with a bad enough mask. So overall, it does seem that this 70 US dollars focuser is performing exactly as I would expect and actually maybe even better than what its uh, budget implies, which is really good because now it gives us uh, an alternative to do electronic focuser that is like what, $130 cheaper than the closest uh, one in price. And that's great. And it, you know, it, overall it makes sense because it's after all just a stepper motor with a control board. Uh, but the way that they've packaged it is pretty good. Uh, it's a bit jank, as we saw, uh, especially in terms of not being able to download the, the ASCOM drivers, although it worked natively on StellarMate slash Indie. And of course, it has the limitation, which is through no fault of its own, but the limitation that it doesn't work on the ZWASI Air uh, because it's not the ZWAF. But if you're not a ZWASI Air user, 
and you've been wanting to get an electronic focuser, this looks like a perfectly good uh, choice at a very cheap price. There's very little to lose even though you are ordering from AliExpress and again I have the links down in the description. And the only thing that you know is wrong with it is the jank aspect. Uh, which is, to be honest, in my opinion, minor as long as you can actually get your hands on the Ascom driver. And I'll also have the link to my Google Drive with the Ascom driver. Hopefully it's not going to bother the uh, maker of this focuser, fingers crossed. Oh, and I was wondering as well, why did I observe Under the Stars more backlash than what I saw visually? Uh, I think there could be something to do with torque because I was just looking at the shaft with no load on it whatsoever. And also it might have been to do with the coupler. There's this uh, coupling item between the focuser and the uh, telescope focuser, and that thing can bend a little bit, right? So that initiates a little bit of backlash, I would assume. I don't know, I am not an expert in that respect. All I can say is that with the overshoot backlash setting in Nina, uh, it just works perfectly, very repeatedly, getting great focus each and every time. So are you interested in this focuser? Are you thinking about buying it? And I really want to thank my viewers who told me about this focuser because it does look to be a very good alternative to uh, more established brands like QHY Focuser or uh, ZWEF type of focusers and of course the much more expensive ones from Moonlight, uh, Optech, etc. So leave a like if you appreciate that my viewers told me about this. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of video. With that, that's all I have for today. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.